highly favored one of the Lord. May the good Lord bless you as we have gathered today to celebrate the Lord's word on this healing streams reflection. The title for today's post is Knives and Mustard Seeds. Learning faith from a five-year-old. Beloved, they were baby shoes. What is that type of shoes? Nike baby shoes. Little white leather athletic shoes with a sky blue whoosh on the sides. The cost is $47. I really couldn't afford the shoes, but I bought them anyway, making them even more precious. And so one day, this noble man declared, that my kids and I decided to go out for a hike. My son was five. My daughter was one. And she rode in a backpack. I laced the prized Nike shoes tightly onto her wiggy soft feet. And we set off on a beautiful autumn day. Taking a highly trail through a groove of old oak trees. Columns of dust spun slowly as they fluttered up in the sunlight. Finally, we arrived at the trail end. As we rested, I felt my daughter's little squeamy foot rub along my back. It was soft, too soft. I looked down and my heart gave a jolt. I saw a pink leg, a white sock, no shoe. I turned around, frantically, scanning the ground around us. And on up the trail, nothing. I started quickly back up the trail as my mind spiraled off in endless wheels of worry. Then I stopped stood, fretted. That was when the five-year-old Ethan spoke. His clear, earnest gaze soothed away my frown. Mommy, why don't you pray? That was it, so simple. Ethan and I held hands. He prayed, God, we lost Thea's shoe. We can find it anywhere. We don't know what to do. Please help us. If my son's faith was a mustard seed, then mine was a dust mite, says the mother. I didn't talk to pray. And then even when I heard Ethan prayer, I didn't trust God to answer it. I was too busy worrying. What is faith? Faith is the opposite of worry. Faith means to believe or to trust in a God who cares. A God who knows how precious a little shoe can be. Faith is not a feeling, but an action, an act of the will. And it all starts with prayer. Prayer is talking to God telling him your problems and trusting that he knows best. In Luke 18, 16 to 17, Jesus talked about the fate of small children who rushed to touch and talk to him. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Why is it that when a crisis hits, we try everything else we can off before we talk to God? Maybe it's because 
We have too much education and too many resources. Five-year-old Ethan didn't. But he didn't know how to send out a 911 call to go, his first resource. Beloved, how do you get faith? How to get faith? Where does this childlike faith come from? First, ask God. He gives a measure of faith to all believers. Romans 12, 3 tells us. And he will increase it as he works in each life. Luke 17, 5. Next, follow Ethan's example. Make a 911 prayer to God your first act, not your last resort. If God cares enough to have numbered every hair on your head, Luke 12, 6 to 7, I know he cares about a lost baby shoe. Last, keep a journal noting the dates of prayers and their answers. Review it periodically and your faith will grow as you see girls answer your petitions. He never changes. He is still a God of miracles. Beloved, what about the shoe? I mean, and the shoe. As soon as Ethan said, Amen. This is what the mother said. I saw something in the dark of the woods, 50 years away. A column of light broke through the trees. The ray gleamed and like a miracle of alchemy, transfigured the slowly rising dust into particles of floating gold. It was so bright that the surrounding forest grew even darker, but it was what the dazzling ray of sunlight picked out that caught my eye. The lost shoe. It lay in the red dust, gleaning the center of a golden circle. I was speechless at once, amazed at the miracle and ashamed of my doubt. I ran towards the precious shoe, tears surging my heart full. The five-year-old wasn't phased. He of what now seemed to me to be towering and even profound faith, thought it was no big deal, as if he knew God would answer his prayer. But I needed to understand that day the meanness and smallness of my faith. I needed to see true faith in action. I needed a miracle. It is a paradox. How can the smallest among us, the youngest, the most immature, the least wise, the most inexperienced, and almost wholly uneducated, possess true faith? And I saw it that afternoon. Ethan showed me. I learned how to get faith. I asked, and he answered with a shoe. Beloved, thanks for such a wonderful testimony coming from a mother. May God richly bless you for listening. Have a wonderful day and bye for now.